Okay. And so the question was, what are, what is, is it, what's X? Or let's find the angle. Find the angle Q and S in this diagram. Now there was a rule we kind of glanced over yesterday that says, in two triangles, if two pairs of angles are the same measure, which is what the double arcs and the single arcs represent, then it's implied that the third angle pair also is the same. So that would mean for this, 2x squared is equal to 3x squared minus 64. So that's the geometry, the new part. It's called the third angle theorem. I, I did kind of downplay it a little bit because students have a tendency to overuse it. They're not sure what to say when they say two angles are equal. They say, oh, it must be the third angle theorem. It usually isn't. But in this case, it is. First pair of angles equal. Second pair of angles equal. Therefore, the third pair of angles are equal. And so from that, I can write this expression, setting them equal to each other. And now the algebra is a little weird because it's got the x squared in it, not x2. I heard a few people say that while you were working, and I, I tried not to overly cringe. But x squared. Remember, you treat that just like an x for solving so if I subtract 3x squared from each side, this becomes negative x squared is a negative 64. Divide both sides by negative 1. And then take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 64 is a positive or negative 8. And then the question was, what was the measure of angle Q? Let's so plug it back in. 2 times 8 squared. That's either a positive or a negative to get the same answer because I'm squaring it. It is 2 times 64, which is 128. And that's true for both angle Q and S because they're the same. And I think what may have happened is there were probably two problems. First was getting the setup. The second was getting caught in the, that whole quadratic thing that we haven't really done a lot in the middle of the last year in algebra. What else can I say about that problem? Yeah. Whenever you've got an x squared equals, the way to peel off that square is to take the square root of both sides. And we, otherwise, you treat the variable squared like a variable unsquared to get it completely isolated. The last thing you pop off is that square. You get 128. Absolutely. You can do that. I don't like to do that because I'm kind of uh, particular. I like to get x equals something. But yeah, if you just get down to x squared equals 64, you can just substitute the 64 right in there. So you're doing 2 times 64, which... Yeah, which still gets you 128. Still works. What else can I say about that? Okay.